Aloha, Dr. Glenn. We're at the level of intention as well as memory and will, how we transcend the, the time dimension uh, with our consciousness, including our vision. So this is the, in Oriental medicine, this would be the water element. Uh, we'll go into that in, in greater detail in other places in the, the clinical theory of everything. It's part of, part of the whole picture that we're, we're uh, walking through here, but this is an introduction from the perspective of peripheral vision development. So we're at the kidney in Oriental medicine. We're in the water element, uh, which relates to these functions as well as to the ears, to sound. So we're going to talk about the soundscape, the space around us as we hear it. Uh, you can integrate this uh, as an exercise with your peripheral visual awareness to see the space and at the same time hear the space. Can you hear the three-dimensionality of the auditory space integrated, simultaneous, coherent with the visual space? You may hear sounds that you do not see. Right now I can hear an airplane. I cannot see it. You may hear something behind you in your back space that you cannot see, but you can. You can't see it with these eyes, right? You can see it with the internal eye, with the, with the pineal eye, with the visualization process. You can see it in your mind's eye, as we say. So that's part of being a ninja, as you see not only the 180 degrees all the time, but you see a 360 degree view, all the space behind you. You know exactly where everything is. You can visualize it, you've seen it, or you hear it, or you feel it, you sense it. You are in communion with it because it is you. If you're creating a true or veridical fractal of the universe, of your perceptual uh, sensorium, then you are in communion with it. Your consciousness, consciousness is there. The dark energy, which only appears dark from the outside, but to you appears as the light of vision, is there. You see it. And that's why the ninja can shoot an arrow behind his back and hit the target when necessary. Okay, so in this level, you're becoming just working at the level primarily of awareness still. This first course is about the peripheral vision and awareness, bringing awareness to all the functions that it's going to integrate with, like in this case, our intention, or as intention from the past carries itself through to the present is memory, as intention carries itself forward into the future and helps to co-create that future. Uh, that's the, the will. So this navigation, beginning of navigation of the time, the space-time experience of being incarnate in the biology, the in the bio-body suit. Okay, so that's a good chunk to contemplate and to practice you know, in higher levels of, of visual development and further courses. This will be a very active uh, active reference point of, of games and movement and, and where we get feedback and interaction. And you can think of it in those times when you're, say you're playing sport. What is your, what is the role of, of your will, your intention, your memory? Of, of hearing the space around you. How does that integrate with vision? Right? Hearing and vision are two different senses. But vision is continuous over this space in front of you. Now memory, you have visual memory of the space behind you. So sounds are here and there and one over back there. So they're not continuous. They're isolated. It's the visual space that unifies it all. So it's the net that can catch those little fish, you know, from the water element, uh, the sounds, and locate them, localize them. We can localize things much more precisely in space, visually, than we can auditorily. But we do have two ears, and it, it is 
a stereophonic experience, like it's a stereoscopic experience of vision. So we want those two to be coherent, to work in tandem, simultaneously, fully integrated, without effort. So by bringing attention and awareness to that, that's how you develop that, that integration. And doing that in different circumstances, taking a walk. Hmm. Are, are you aware at, one, at the same moment of, in your mind, in your spirit, how you're holding an intention? You have a, a goal. You're going to walk over here and then over there and then back home. You have, and that's going to get into the next level of navigational maps and internal vision and visualization. It's the next step. But you have that, that linear progression that's there in the thinking now expressed into the will to express externally, to change your environment, to change your relationship to your environment, to move the feet, to change it, which changes everything, changes your whole visual perspective, to move the hands, that changes the relationship of objects mm -hmm. in space, to make things, to craft our world, uh, to change things with the motion of the mouth, to speak, to communicate and uh, the motion of the eyes. I'm looking at you, and now I'm looking over there. I'm taking in entirely different central focal information, right? I can still do that in a relaxed way that takes in my full periphery, so I'm still aware of you. A basketball player certainly needs that skill to function well on the court. He's, he's, you know, there's the, the hoop, and you're the opposing player, and I'm going to keep looking at you, and I'm going to shoot shoot toward the hoop over there in my periphery. Not lose focus on, on the opponent, but know where the, the basket is. And so I can fake. I can fake you out by not looking where I'm intending. By being able to separate, as we started working on the first on level two, level three, the separation between focus of attention, of, of, of where we're attending, and where we're focusing with the eyes, where we're looking with the eyes. I can be looking here, thinking there. And practicing being aware of the full periphery gives us that database for movement, for all these types of, and levels of distinctions of movement, of, of, of coordination and integration of different kinds of movement patterns, because thinking is movement. You know, when a tennis player visualizes serving a tennis ball, if you have electromyograph, EMG, on the muscles, you can measure the thought in the muscles. But it's subliminal. So we have these subliminal, low-level, low-energy fractal thinking to work out the plan, and then we activate the plan, and then in the next step we're going to get into having an overview to make sure we have options within that plan because things don't always work out the way we plan. Okay, be back soon.